Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have Romances with Disability Representation. Next month in July is Disability Pride Month, so I thought I would recommend 10 romances that y'all should check out during that month, put on your TBRs for July. Romance books with disability representation is like a big, big, big soft spot for me. I really, really love these books and I actively seek them out because I just want to see more representation out there. As someone who is chronically ill and disabled, I... I, I love seeing books with representation. I have quite a few rec videos. This might be like number like 10 or something, honestly. So I'll try to leave a play. I think it's, a, I have a playlist, a playlist down below full of other recommendation videos with books that have disability representation. So without further ado, here are 10 romances with disability representation that I really enjoyed. First is Only and Forever by Chloe Liza. This is the last book, the latest book in her Barbara Mothers series. Every single book in this series has representation of some sort. This one specifically has uh, the representation for type one diabetes. This is the romance between Vigo and Tallulah. So Vigo is the last sibling in the Barbara family, okay, to not get his romance yet. He has been waiting on the sidelines basically for years, being like, when is it gonna be my turn? When am I gonna find my person? But he's also like meddled in his family members' love lives. He loves love, he loves romance books, okay, and he really wants to open a romance bookstore. Enter Tallulah, who is actually Ziggy's, who is his sister, his sister Ziggy, has a best friend. Tallulah is that best friend's sister, okay? They actually also knew each other a few years ago. They took a college course together, but they haven't seen each other since. He was always like very, attracted to her okay vigo essentially makes this deal with Tulula where she will come live in the spare room that he has attached to the bookstore that he's opening and he will in exchange help her write the thriller novel that she's just been stumped on this is her second release she already wrote her debut novel and she has been just stuck writing her second one who's gonna help her with that and they end up falling for each other through the midst of all this the forced proximity their love for books like I love both of these characters so much and it was like a great conclusion to this series. The representation for type 1 diabetes was really great. I don't have, by the way, type 1 diabetes. I don't have any of the conditions mentioned in this video, by the way, so take with that what you will. Just letting that be known okay um, but if you're wanting a book with type 1 diabetes representation i would recommend this i really related to tulula and having a condition like you're gonna be stuck with for the rest of your life and it sucks <laughs> like it absolutely sucks i was crying in one of these scenes that i was reading where tulula her sugar is really low when i and it's waking her up vigo has to help take care of her and she just starts like crying she's like i am so sick of this and oh i felt for her so hard i felt for her so i love this book chloe always knows how to write like 10 out of 10 representation a five minute life by emma scott actually has representation with two characters um so this is the romance between thea and jim and thea was in a car accident with her family she got amnesia from it so she has a brain injury she has amnesia um and she lives in this psychiatric ward and jim is hired to kind of like be a warden someone to like clean up and take care of patients like um just like keep the place safe kind of like be a security guard a little bit. Jim has a stutter, so there's that representation as well, and he's always very been very self-conscious about it, but he finds he's not self-conscious around Thea. Um, the two become friends, even with her very short memory span, and he's slowly starting to realize she's remembering some things when he's talking to her. And so yeah, it's their romance even with her like memory amnesia. And it's really interesting, it's really good. The Friendship Study by um, Ruby Barrett is a recent favorite of mine. I absolutely love this. I love a discussion of disabilities, chronic illnesses, neurodivergence in this book. Also there's great LGBTQ plus rep in here as well. So I feel like this is just a well-rounded, fantastic, diverse book. These two characters get set up on a blind date by a mutual friend. It doesn't really go that great. They're both very bored. They're also not in the right space both of them to have a relationship. So it doesn't really go that great, but they don't expect to see the other person afterward, but then they do when they both sign up to work for or be a part of this friendship study that the local college is putting together. They're basically going to be studying how adults form friendships, which I know is very difficult as an adult who doesn't have many friends, who has difficulty making friends, I feel you. One of the main rules for the study is that you cannot fall in love with each other. You can't get together, can't hook up, can't do any of that. 
um, because it's a friendship study. So the more time they spend together, the more time they become friends, they end up actually falling in love with each other. So it's a friends to lovers. I love this one so much. The hero actually has chronic pain. Sometimes he uses a cane to walk. So I loved that representation. And the heroine might be figuring out that she is neurodivergent. So I, I loved the whole process of that, of her figuring out what's going on. Another book with fantastic neurodivergence representation is Truthfully Yours by Caden Armstrong. This one is own voices for, I believe, anxiety and autism. It starts out at a kind of like a comic con if you will the heroine and her best friend are going to watch this panel for this show that both of them really love um and she is in line to ask the panel a question when the little boy in front of her asks one of the actors a question the little boy basically says that he's autistic um he really loves one of the actors how he portrays one of the alien characters in this sci-fi show the little boy asks him how he feels about his character possibly being autistic because he relates to him so much with the fact that he also has autism and the actor just says some like really bad ableist things in response to that little boy he goes off crying the boy goes off crying and the heroine her question goes out the window and she basically is like pulls her sleeves up and she's like oh no and she basically like disses him goes off on him yells at him for being an ableist snob people will video this she goes viral online but not in a good way like people start bashing her because she snapped at this guy for being ableist like mm, it was not good it was not good okay anyway she's kind of like blacklisted from the internet right now and she decides to take a vacation in scotland and run this bookstore um while the owner's on vacation so she does that she goes to the apartment about the garage but then one of her first nights living there someone like comes in and she full-on like wax him with like a pan or a baseball bat or something and um she realizes what is this famous actor doing in this apartment and it turns out he was one of the cast members on that panel he was not the ableist dude he was one of the cast members on the panel and his sister owns this bookstore and he's like oh my gosh i've been wondering what happened to you i was like mentally clapping for you the whole time he couldn't like outright say anything because it was against his contract to be like oh yeah yes i agree with her um because he can't speak out about any of the actors or whatnot but um he's always wondered what happened to her and if she was okay anyway long story short these two have to be roommates for the summer and um, they end up falling for each other the heroine is autistic and um so there's that own voices representation and i'm pretty sure our hero has anxiety so that's where that own voices representation comes in as well another romance with a type 1 diabetic is mountain man's bride this is a short little novella where a heroine cannot afford insulin she keeps going to the hospital and the doctors are like you got to take your insulin Insulin. there's a reason why you're coming to the hospital all the time you cannot like you have to take your insulin she goes i cannot afford it like i can't afford it give it to me then um so her best friend decides to put her on a mail order bride website our hero is this cowboy rancher mountain man and when his parents passed away they basically said like all you and your brothers can get your money your inheritance once you get married and uh so he just decides to get a mail order bride and get the heroin like shipped to him okay <laughs> And she's like, okay, I'll go along with this because I need health insurance and he can provide health insurance. And he does just that once he realizes that she's going through some health problems and she cannot afford her insulin. He marches right up to the hospital. The moment that he meets her and is like, you're getting this, we're getting this for you. And he really takes the time to take care of her with her type one diabetes. I really love the representation. It was really good. Um, this is novella length, so it is a little bit shorter. Just wanted to let you know. Next is a paranormal one. This is a werewolf shifter romance. This is The Tyrant Alpha's Rejected Mate by Kate C. Wells. This takes place in a werewolf pack that's off in the woods, like very like distant from human society. They don't interact with humans at all. Um, but anyway, the hero is the alpha of the pack and the heroine realizes that she is his fated mate. She's one of like the low, lower people of the pack in the totem pole. When she tells him that like, oh my gosh, you're my mate. He's like, no, you're not. Yeah, I wouldn't know if you were my mate. You're not my mate. I don't feel anything. Um, she's heartbroken from this. Basically, like her heart is cleaving in two that she's getting rejected from her faded mate. So she goes to the local witch of the pack and asks her to sever the bond. The witch does it, does what she's asked to do. Um, and once she does that, the hero starts to feel something. And he's like, oh crap, I think she was my fated man. I think I kind of screwed that up. So he decides to start groveling his butt off. I really loved this one. It was really good. It got me in my paranormal romance kick. The heroine in here has a limp. She has a leg injury and she walks with a limp. So that's that representation. And the hero really tries to help her and make her feel comfortable and make sure she's not experiencing any more pain that she already does daily. Um, so discusses like chronic pain in here, which I really appreciated. Next, I have The Bachelor Bargain by Madison Michaels. This is 
a historical romance, obviously. This book starts out with the heroine figuring out that one of her close friends died. And she wants to find out who this person is that is killing a bunch of women in London. And so she needs the uh, bastard of Baker Street, Sebastian, to help her figure out who is doing this. And so they kind of team up to try and track down this killer. Um, and through that, they end up falling for each other. It's that simple, but I I, I really loved this one. Um, the representation in here, I was not expecting going in, but she's a cane user. She has a limp as well. She has some chronic pain. And so I loved that. I love seeing mobility aid users also in historicals because you don't really get to see that a lot. She has some like secret things going on with her cane, which, is also really fun. Like when you got like a dagger or something hidden in your cane, it's also really fun. Then I have a fantasy one. This is Ballad of Sea and Sky by Madeline Elliott. Um, I think the conclusion to this duet is coming out in the next month or two. So maybe you can pick this one up in preparation for that. So our heroine is a selkie, which is like um, the bottom half is like seal mermaid-ish creature and the hero is a siren which is like a creature with wings anyway their people hate each other they're at war anyway the heroine is like the selkie princess and her father ends up capturing the hero who's a siren again sworn enemies and he ends up putting him in the dungeon and the heroine goes down to see him she's never seen a siren is very curious he ends up kidnapping her <laughs> That was like the plan all along, get in and kidnap her, okay? And he ends up bringing her to his parish ship. He's like a siren pirate dude, which I love anything with pirates, so yes. And he's kind of kidnapping her for ransom. She has asthma, which is very difficult for a selkie to have. A creature who is supposed to be underwater for a long time, where all of her family and all of her friends and everyone she knows can hold her, their breath for like 15 minutes she can barely do three. It's really hard for her to swim in the ocean. So I really loved seeing that representation. You don't see that anywhere, especially in a fantasy book. Anyway, the two of them are forced to be around each other while he kidnapped her, but then they also get stranded on an island together. So it's forced proximity. It's actually really fun. An alien romance that I have is Craving His Mate by A.G. Wilde. I think every single book in the series, um, the heroine of this alien romance series, the heroine has a disability of some sort. So the heroine from book number one um, was was born with only one arm and this one our heroine is a wheelchair user and oh my gosh trigger warning in here for like like people treating someone with a disability like garbage like it's awful so she gets kidnapped by evil aliens okay and forced to work in this space tavern but they won't give her her wheelchair. So she has to hold a tray and drag her body across the ground because she literally cannot walk. And all these aliens like get off on the fact that she has to drag herself across the floor. It's absolutely awful. Our hero walks into the bar and instantly recognizes her as his fated mate. And he is there to take everyone down, everyone down and rescue her. It's a great short, read um if you're wanting an alien romance for the representation and i do need to read the other two books because i haven't yet i think there's four books in the series i need to pick up the other two but please trick away in here if you don't want to read about someone being like absolutely mistreated don't pick this one up and the last one that i have is another novella this is follow me to the yew tree the author reached out to me to send me this book um, because it has own voices representation for ulcerative colitis this is a great short read so our two characters i think this is like historical-esque both of them are traveling somewhere and they end up across each other's paths and they're like okay let's just travel together so they do that it's kind of like that simple the two of them fall for each other while they're traveling across these lands and the hero is the one with ulcerative colitis and he's dealing with feeling self-conscious having this horrible pain in him like I felt for him so hard and the heroine just being there to console him and to help him every step of the way. So again, if you want a like shorter read, I definitely recommend this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romances with disability representation. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, but if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a tree emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.